Hi everyone, welcome to Equilab webinar series. The today's session will begin very soon, so just sit back and relax for the time being. Sorry. Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Ecolabs webinar series. My name is Ryan Jin, and I'm leading the Smart Cities and Future Mobility effort at Ecolabs Center of Innovation for Energy, or Ecolabs for short. I will be hosting this session. Ecolabs, jointly established by Nanyang Technological University, Enterprise Singapore, and Sustainable Energy Association Singapore, SEAS, aims to build and accelerate deep tech energy innovation capability in Singapore to support the nation's future energy transition. The joint initiatives aims to help Singapore-based startup and SME successfully commercialize and scale their energy innov innovations effort by providing them with the following translation and research, living test fit, innovation program, and funding partners and community platform. As the COVID situation is going on, we are organizing the Ecolabs webinar series to continue the engagement and interaction with our partners, where we invite industry experts to offer their insights on their respective topics. This webinar series comprises of five teams, startup series, insight series, corporate series, investor series, and Ecolabs series, each focusing on different aspects of the innovation ecosystem. Today's session is part of the Ecolabs Insight webinar series to provide industrial insights to understand and navigate the innovation journey in the energy sector. You will also learn about the different aspects of the startup ecosystem, market analysis, and what to look out for and where are the different opportunities. Today's webinar is part of a partnership between Ecolabs and Continental Automotive Singapore, where Ecolabs is happy to partner with Continental in co-innovation programs like the Ecolabs Continental Urban Mobility Accelerator ECOMA program and proof of concept projects in supporting startup and technology innovation. Continental develops pioneering technologies and services for sustainable and connected mobility of people and their goods. Founded in 1871, the technology company offers safe, efficient, intelligent, and affordable solutions for vehicles, machines, traffic, and transportation. In 2019, Continental generates sales of 44.5 billion euro and currently employs about 240,000 people in 59 countries and markets. Today's webinar titled Continental's Journey in Driving Impact with Startups, presented by Mr. Konstantin Mildorf incubation and communications of Copace Continental. Constantine will share observation on the role of Copace, brings a few uh, couple of examples on what Continental and Copace have done and conclude with four things that such unit need to be successful. Constantine is the jack of many trades and master of a few. Constantine has a passionate, is passionate about the intersection between art and technology, science and storytelling, and emotions and experience. He is a communications professional who is traveling in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world by leaning into optimism and resilience. With experience in strategy and innovation, market, marketing intelligence and pricing, diversity management, and organization de development, he is currently responsible for activities related to internal incubation and company building new ventures in Continental AG, a technology company with 150 years of history. Towards the end of each session, we will have about 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can key in your questions in the Q&A box or raise hands so that we can unmute you to voice your questions during the interaction session. Now, without further ado, we would like to pass the session to Mr. Constantine. Constantine, please. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, 
extremely excited to be joining all of you and it is uh, one of my very first uh, webinars of this kind digitally so I'm a little bit unnerved by the fact that I'm staring at a blank screen and just seeing a number of attendees with names but nothing more uh, so, so bear with me while I'm getting used to that and uh, my eye might not always be looking at the camera, but I'm trying to, to make as much eye contact as possible. Um, I'm very excited to be uh, uh, um, uh, here with you today and, and talking about uh, our journey, the journey that Continental has taken over the past uh, a couple of years, uh, three years now, to build um, uh, an innovation unit uh, that we call Copays. Um, which, uh, which I'm going to, to, to tell you a little bit about and, and what we've been doing. Uh, in this, uh, um, uh, in this um, presentation today, um, I've tried to uh, do a bit um, uh, of a mix between a few questions here or there just to get a sense of who is on the line and, and, and keep us all engaged a little bit. Um, uh, uh, give you a couple of more theoretical perspectives, but also make it as much hands-on as possible. And uh, I'd love to uh, make sure that you police me along the way. And if uh, uh, there are questions, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, even, even uh, drop them in uh, as, as we are going. Um, I'll make sure that we have uh, perhaps even more than just the 10 minutes for, for the Q&A at the end. Um, uh, and, and I'm excited to see what, um, what, what you uh, uh, want to know. Uh, I have to say that you know I'm humbled uh, by by this because uh, you know I've been on this journey perhaps shorter than most others, uh, but Continental's uh, activities and what our team has done uh, has really inspired me tremendously, and that's why I'm so so excited to be standing here. Although I stand in for all the other uh, colleagues of Continental and a co-pace. Um, and uh, what I'm going to share with you now are things that we all have collectively learned and we think that it is helpful for the whole ecosystem to benefit from that, uh, which is why uh, we're so excited to also share these things with you. So let, let me just start by very quickly actually checking in who are the people who are participating today so that I can understand a little bit better how even I can tailor uh, the, the discussion uh, as we go along. So I would like to invite all of you to um, you know, pull up your smartphones um, and either scan the QR code or go to uh, this website uh, here indicated on the top, menti.com, and uh, you'll be prompted to enter this code. And in order to make sure that I understand how we're doing in the timing. I'm going to do that together with you. So I'm also opening that. And I need to type in a passcode. And then um, the first question that you'll see is, uh, who are you? Um, I'm trying to get a good sense. And here is what I'm even seeing already. You are very quick at pulling in. 18 people have participated so far, 19. We have a few coming from a startup, about half, uh, 45%, 43 uh, uh, from corporates, uh, a huge uh, part also coming from research in university and a few coming from other. Uh, I think we still have a few more people. Uh, there were 29 or so earlier when I had a look, uh, 35 participants, so let's see, a few more. Uh, joining or managing to fill in this. That's great. So I'll keep that in mind um, while we go along. I think that is, uh, that is super helpful um, for us. Let me also then also answer and that number jumps in. Yep. And there will be a short uh, second question uh, in a moment and then a third one a little bit later. Uh, but that's good. We can take a look at, at how these numbers have evolved in the next few minutes um, as I go along. So you should all be still able to, um, uh, to, to do that. And let's go on. Now, uh, just to make sure you do not see, there is a, I have here the screen with all the pictures. You do not see that, do you? Or should I hide it? No, we are looking at your slides. You're looking just at the slides, perfect. So, great. Then, then um, let me continue with, uh, this, is, this is a little bit what, what I'm planning to tell you about today. So, you know, what is the role of startup organizations? Uh, uh, 
you know, Copace, as I mentioned, was was the the, the name of what Continental came up with, um, and other companies have other names for such startup units and startup organizations, innovation labs, uh, and, and and other sort of terminologies that are being used. What is their role? I think is a very important question before we even start block, to, uh, talking about uh, Continental specifically. Um, and of course, uh, we, we somehow all of us know that startups are holding a key. Um, and so what is that key? What kind of an impact can we actually see working with startups? And these two chapters of the presentation are perhaps the more theoretical chapters. Um, and the most interesting one, hopefully for you, would be the last one, which is what does it take actually to do that? And, and there, um, you know, it, it, we're all looking for our recipes still. And I'm going to share a few uh, examples of what we have done um, uh, that we, we believe uh, makes for a very successful collaboration with startups. Um, I, I know that. Uh, probably the majority of you are somehow familiar with Continental, um, and 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 just to 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 get a sense of how familiar we are, um, I want to also briefly ask a few questions on that. Um, and um, you can either uh, go back to your mobile phone. Hopefully, you haven't closed the browser, and I can activate the second question. Or for those of you who have uh, not yet managed. Um, uh, please feel free to scan the code or go to the website and enter this this participant code and I'll give you 10 seconds now to do that and then I go back and activate the second question okay let's go to the second question so we got to 28 um, and still the split is quite a few corporates, uh, university research, good. Then we're moving to the second question now, which is what are the first things that come to mind when you think of Continental, when you hear Continental? So let's give it a moment. Let me also make sure that that works for you. Yep, I see that. Feel free to basically enter there uh, 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 words or phrases, keep it as short as possible. Um, and, and let's see what comes up. Airline, hotel, mobility, tires, automotive, English or uh, American English or British English spelling, multiple variations there, yeah. And singular or plural, Mentimeter needs to work on their algorithm still, probably, but automotive is leading the way, yeah. That is, that is correct, that is good. Multinational polluter, um, uh, we all somehow are, but we all have to be responsible in that, yes. Tier one, global, online, hotels. So that, that looks quite, quite accurate, apart from a few ones which, uh, which we'll go into uh, uh, in a second. Good, I'll give you another five seconds and we switch back to the presentation. Michelin, uh, Michelin is a competitor. Hopefully that's what you had in mind. Um, automotive supplier, mobility, very big one, Das Auto. Das Auto is, is Volkswagen's uh, um, slogan. Uh, Volkswagen is another German company, but uh, uh, connected, uh, connected industries, absolutely. Great, all right, then let me tell you sort of the official history uh, of Continental to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, so no, we are not in airlines and no, we are not in hotels, but a lot of the other things that were mentioned there are absolutely spot on. Uh, Continental is a company with a very, very rich history uh, going back to 1871. Uh, next year, in fact, we're celebrating 150th anniversary, um, and it's a super exciting time uh, for, for the company. Um, it started all the way uh, back in the 19th century with production of soft rubber goods, um, uh, whether that's hoofs for, uh, and buffers for horses, um, uh, which is why one of our key uh, um, uh, visuals today is still a horse. Um, but, but of course, of course, a lot of other rubberized fabrics, which are also part of our current portfolio today. And um, of course, tires, which uh, are very well known. And um, at that time, of course, mostly bike, bike tires, and then little by little more automob automobile tires. 
we still today, uh, of course, make uh, bike and car tires, but, uh, but, but also uh, tires for commercial vehicles for all kinds of applications. Um, I think the only tires that we do not make are for Lego. Um, Lego is actually still one of the, the biggest tire manufacturer by volume. Um, uh, if, if, uh, uh, if we do not look exclusively in the automotive industry. Um, the history, however, has been getting richer and richer. And over the past uh, about 30 years, Continental has shifted more and more into automotive components. And one of the biggest uh, transformations came in the early 2000s when Continental acquired Siemens Video, um, uh, which was a huge automotive uh, uh, supplier at that time. And that put us in the top five suppliers uh, in the automotive industry worldwide. And since then, we have continued to grow and to um, uh, diversify the portfolio and to change. Um, in the beginning of the year, effective January 1st, um, we renamed uh, some of our uh, business areas um, uh, and, and, and we realigned a little bit our organization, also preparing for a spin-off of uh, Vitesco Technologies, uh, which is uh, this, uh, oops, uh, apologies for activating this, which is uh, uh, this part of our business, uh, which, which uh, originally had uh, everything to do with the uh, electric engine, uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the engine systems, and today, of course, has a lot to do with also with electric engines. Um, this will, at some point in time in the next year uh, or so, uh, currently unannounced when, uh, is going to become a separate company. Um, this is rubber technologies, the core of our business, and uh, automotive technologies, uh, sort of the relatively new kid on the block uh, as part of the long history of Continental. Um, uh, uh, focusing on everything from uh, uh, mobility, safety, uh, autonomous driving systems, and of course, connectivity, networking technologies, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, this is uh, giving, uh, as, as, as Ryan summarized in the beginning, uh, an overview of about 44 billion revenues, uh, 44 and a half billion revenues uh, sales, uh, 240,000 employees 10 years ago, uh, when I joined Co Co Continental, we were only 170 or so, so tremendous growth over the past 10 years, um, and uh, uh, almost 600 uh, sites uh, around the world. Um, about 71% of our business is in automotive original equipment, that means supplying to the car manufacturers, and um, uh, just uh, shy of 30% to other industries, such as the mining industry uh, uh, or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, basically manufacturing industries and others. Um, and uh, Singapore, of course, is uh, one of our key locations when it comes to R&D and innovation uh, uh, for products in the automotive space. Um, and, and this is just giving a glimpse of what uh, some of our key uh, products uh, that are being developed uh, uh, in Singapore uh, are. In Singapore, I, have, I think we have about a thousand uh, colleagues um, with, with a very strong focus, uh, as I mentioned, on R&D, um, from everything from uh, uh, instrument clusters and uh, various input devices and camera products to connectivity uh, products uh, such as telematic systems, body controls, and so on, and uh, some uh, services uh, towards um, commercial vehicle uh, manufacturing and uh, commercial vehicle customers. Um, uh, a new addition to the block, of course, is, is our heat organization, our holistic engineering and technologies uh, team um, who are focusing on cutting edge uh, uh, product development and technology development uh, in the area of artificial intelligence, uh, security and privacy, uh, connectivity and uh, autonomous driving systems. And within that uh, framework, uh, Continental has collaborated with Ecolabs, um, and that of course is uh, an ongoing collaboration started, uh, I think last year, um, where we're looking for partners uh, to partner with startups, with innovation teams, with the university uh, uh, teams, um, looking at how can we develop projects together. And this is very much the core of what Copace is also interested in um, and what we are trying to accomplish. Because 
um, like every other big corporate, we have also a vision for what this world is going to look like in the future with um, uh, everything from uh, the drones, uh, the, the highway activities and off highway activities, charging stations, smart materials. And all of these things, they interact. And, and what for us matters at the end of the day is that we know that mobility was important, is important, and of course will continue to be important. And so we need to keep pace with all of that and we need to keep innovating. Um, and, and we understand that that innovation is not going to uh, uh, materialize itself on its own. It's not going to come if you develop it in a silo. It has to be done um, in, in a, in a cross-industry uh, approach. Uh, and that's where uh, collaborations are so, so important. And um, when, when Continental several years ago was looking at understanding how can we set up such an innovation unit that is, that is forward-looking and partnership-oriented, we looked at, at the market and we, we tried to understand what are the approaches that exist out there for such innovation units. And um, the type of innovation units can be roughly categorized in these six ones, connector, lab or garage, incubator, company builder, accelerator, a corporate venture capital arm, and uh, sort of an innovation hub or a digital unit, which is a combination of all of these. Now, each one has a certain, you know, focus. Um, and, and of course, with that focus, there are certain challenges. Typical reasons for failure are everything from, uh, basically, if you're a connector, that means that you're oriented towards the ecosystem, but that makes it difficult to build a bridge towards the inside because the internal network might not be present. If you're only an incubator or a company builder, meaning you're developing business models or even technologies and, and companies around that, um, typically what it means is that that's very intense, uh, resource intensive, because you have to cuff in all the capital uh, and you have to provide all the capital for that uh, development. Um, and, and not too many things stick at the end of the day, because by definition, they're in contradiction with the established business of the, of the corporate. If you're an accelerator, uh, you know, you have relatively easy uh, early phase, um, but things get to increase and the failure rates get to increase, which means that the mothership of the corporate will often be uh, getting more and more impatient uh, if you do purely acceleration. And, and, you know, I don't have to go through all of these. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear about some of these challenges uh, and, and what our approaches have been. What, um, what, what Copace and Continental has taken as an approach is to build a combination of these, uh, an innovation hub, if you, if, if, if you, if you wish. Um, and, and, and one of the very first things that we did is we wanted to clarify our mission, knowing that this is a very critical, uh, critical thing, um, and to have a clear focus also on, on, on the fields that we are looking at. Um, and we saw some of those fields in the uh, Ecolabs partnership uh, mentioned on, 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 on a slide before. Um, let us move to another question now um, to the audience. Now, this question is a different QR code uh, and, and a different code here. So, so uh, please uh, scan it again. Um, and I give you a 10 second window to, to, to scan the QR code. Um, and then I'll go back to, to the uh, Safari browser and, and, and I need to also switch the, uh, the, the, the slide there. So just... Uh, Second or two more. Okay, and now let me go back here and go to the next question. There we go. So the question here is, what are some of the top success factors corporate startup collaborations uh, uh, co-creations uh, um, uh, uh, um, need in order to uh, be successful. So we have innovation, communication, supportive relationship, link to business unit. That is a very important one. Um, synergies, yes. Strategic value, startup, CEO mindset. Yeah, that is very much correct. Agility, cultural fit alignment, mindset shift, yeah. 
strategic approaches and acquisitions. We won't talk too much about acquisitions, but the strategic thinking is critical here. Absolutely. Clear business models and a great team. Glad you mentioned the team. I'll talk about that. I think that is very important. The right people with the right skills, young generation with free minds, support and understanding from the management board, walk the talk. Very good, very good input. I don't know why you need to attend this webinar. You are already an expert in this. Open-minded perspective, have a flexible and faster approach, clear demand support from the corporate. Yeah, the right people. Oh, this is, this is the same. We already saw that one. The market opportunities. Excellent. So I'll give it another five seconds, five to 10 seconds. Um, of course, you can continue submitting this, this input and um, uh, I will include the summary of that in, a present, in the presentation, um, uh, which I'll share with Ryan and Leticia um, uh, to make available. Um, so, so you'll also have a documentation of this input uh, from, from the rest of the audience. I think this is amazing. It's, 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 it's amazing to see the, the, the wisdom of the crowd here um, uh, at, at play. Perfect. So let me switch back um, and 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 very briefly, um, you know, I can summarize uh, most of the things that that you had already mentioned in this very sort of business school 101 chart of of of, of looking at what are the strengths the startups typically bring, um, which is out of the box thinking. Uh, they typically have very deep tech knowledge, uh, potentially because most of them come from universities or a lot of them come from from university background, um, uh, uh, such as such as a lot of the activities that we talk uh, here about. Um, there is a lot of experimentation with new business models and that particularly comes because there is a very high risk tolerance uh, and a very high uh, adaptability. Um, corporates typically are not very good with most of those. Uh, corporates are very good with having traction with customers, uh, having already reached the ability to scale um, and of course being very deeply ingrained in a certain industry, they have very deep corporate, uh, a very deep industry know-how. Um, and, and they have already built all the needed uh, channels to access the market um, uh, as well as all the infrastructure players. Um, and, and of course, in our context of automotive, that also means all the mobility providers. Um, and over the many years they've been you know, at, at it, they have built a brand. And that brand typically is, is, is a brand with, 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 with with recognition, a brand that a lot of you, as, as we saw earlier, recognized as uh, you know, automotive, as tires. Our tire brand is particularly strong, um, uh, 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 you know, more so probably than our automotive brand because you don't tend to see the uh, automotive brand. Um, uh, and, and, and so the question is, how can these two worlds come together? And how can a unit like ours um, and like all the other units out there make sure that when these two cultures come together, they do not implode, um, but they actually lead to, to a successful outcome with market relevance and, 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 and successful scaling or whatever the solution that the startup has developed uh, can do. Um, and this, that this is the question that we are asking ourselves uh, when we look and say, what are some of those areas where these things make sense to do, to look at? And, and now this is a little bit more complicated chart, but still very, very, um, uh, I, I think, basic in its, in its fundamental principle, which is when we look at um, what kind of collaborations we can successfully generate, we are looking at uh, on one hand, the market and the customer perspective, and on the other hand, the product perspective or the technology. And so when we talk about existing markets and existing products, um, this is a very typical business unit or, or, or business, you know, business is business. Um, it is a classical market penetration that the core business has to do. It is nothing for an innovation of our startup unit to look at. Uh, and this is typically not an area where startups also play a particular role because if, are always, if there is already a player, if there already is a market, and if there is a very strong product know-how, if the product market is saturated, a startup should not enter this, this stage. 
Um, almost the same could be said if, if, if the product exists, a startup would probably not go into a new market. Um, and even if they do, they'll very quickly need to pivot because that market um, can easily become saturated or, or, or the startup can, can be overtaken by a corporate who, have, uh, who has all the, you know, the, the, the market power, the ability to throw a lot of cash uh, at a problem, uh, at, at the market in order to get in there. So both of these are in a way out of scope for such kind of innovation units. Probably this is very clear to, to, to all of us. Um, where things become a little bit more interesting is when we start looking at um, the new technologies and new business model side of the equation. Um, sometimes you will have an existing market but where new technologies will enable certain new applications or will, uh, will, will simply be far superior. Uh, uh, and, and in that case, we talk about product development, which could be done by the corporate, it typically can be done by the corporate. However, in some cases, there will be a strong benefit um, from, from a very core technology developed either at a university or uh, at a startup. Um, where a specific wide spot or, or something that, you know, wide spot means we know that we don't know this. Um, and, and, and that is where some, some collaborations can also be very successful. And I speak about one of these examples later. The second, um, which is perhaps the most challenging uh, uh, area where such collaborations can come in, is when we talk about diversification. Uh, we talk about either moving moving up the value chain or beyond just the industrialization, looking at totally new products and totally new components, um, uh, and of course, totally new parts uh, adjacent to automotive, uh, and of course, even beyond automotive. Um, so when we put our, when I put my continental hat, um, you know, you can argue that, that, that we can, uh, uh, um, you know, move beyond the typical uh, car manufacturer relationship and supply to the, to the car manufacturers uh, and understand how can our technologies apply to a consumer segment, for example, or to a segment that has to do with micromobility, which is not an area that we are today particularly strong at. And although it is mobility related, it is not necessarily the core automotive area. Um, so this evolution and this combination is, is what requires that we um, we have that clarity of focus. And that is where exactly Copace has come in and said, we are focusing on these two areas. And the way that we do that is by having three approaches, three tools for driving that innovation. And those three tools are uh, the way that we have also set up Copace to be the unit of Continental that powers up the ambitions that we have for leading the future mobility and beyond. And the three approaches that we have are incubation, cooperation with startups, and of course, investments. Um, the two parts, incubation and cooperation, are ran by Copace, and the investment uh, arm of Continental, uh, the corporate venture capital arm of Continental, is taking care of investments. Uh, we, of course, work incredibly close uh, because, because it, 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 it only makes sense when, when the investments, for example, that are done are not pure financial investments, but are done because of strategic relevance. Um, and that strategic relevance, of course, can come in when there is a very tight collaboration within our cooperation program that uh, confirms the technology or the business model makes sense and, and, and fits our, uh, uh, our roadmap and our strategies. The incubation arm, which is the one that I'm uh, leading, um, is, is, is today entirely focused on internal incubation. So getting colleagues um, and, and teams from all over the world uh, in order to create new product concepts for Continental and to execute or to start the execution uh, of some of those. Um, I can also give a couple of examples uh, if, if we have time and if, if the audience is interested in this. Um, a couple of you mentioned the team as being incredibly important for, for, for ensuring the success of this. And, and I want to spend just a second to talk about our team. Um, we are a relatively small team for a company of our size. As, as I mentioned earlier, we're 
you know, 240,000 employees globally, our team is 15 people. 15 people, however, with an incredible uh, background, an incredibly strong background, coming from uh, um, companies uh, in the tech area, uh, such as uh, Google, uh, Airbus, Dell, Delphi, uh, uh, the consulting area, uh, such as Deloitte, Lux Research, um, uh, and of course, very strong uh, education institutions, uh, including NTU, uh, Fraunhofer, uh, um, A-Star, and MIT. And, 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 and you see, you know, for 15 people, when you see so many locations globally, you're probably thinking we are one person per city, which is more or less the case. Um, so although the corona situation um, uh, and, and being stuck at home did not change life for us too much in that respect, um, it still requires uh, of all of us to be incredibly strong uh, um, uh, uh, being able to connect also with one another in order to function effectively. Um, and, and, and this is, I think, one of the most critical aspects of, of, of such a strong team uh, to, to, to make sure that they work as a team. I promise this is my last now uh, theoretical slide, um, but I feel this is a critically important slide because it gives a sense of how we tend to think about what our purpose, what our mandate is. Uh, you might remember that one of the, uh, uh, the, the difficulties um, uh, for, for units that are a mix, um, uh, that are a mix of the different startup uh, approaches, uh, the, the different innovation approaches, is that they do not have the clarity of, of purpose. Now, for us, this is a critically important uh, um, a piece, um, and that's why we have said we want to understand first how can we really add impact to the business? Uh, because it is not sufficient to be just doing the transformation. The transformational and communication and, 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 and cultural change is important, but without uh, uh, being able to actually bring impact, then, then, then the culture transformation will very quickly be viewed as, as, as something you do uh, uh, on the side. Uh, but at the end of the day, of course, we have business uh, and, and strategy to develop. So it is an important element, but it's in the background. It is a supporting factor in order for us to be able to do the business and strategic impact. Now, if we say we do only strategic impact, we focus only on future portfolio. Now, the problem with that is, is that, um, you know, this is a company, we are a corporate that has also to today deliver to customers. And we are in a turbulent times. Uh, uh, we've seen that already last year, uh, automotive sales were going down uh, globally. Um, and, and of course, there, you know, crisis after crisis uh, uh, in 2020, um, we see that just long-term thinking is not sufficient. We have to understand also how can we bring value uh, uh, in the near term. And, and, and that is because also near term, there are a lot of opportunities still out there because startups have been working on some of these things for two, three, five years, uh, uh, even uh, some of them even longer, and they have generated tremendous know-how, which, which already today is looking for how to get to market. And this is where the connection to, to, to continental to corporate becomes so critical also for startups. And so there are multiple benefits uh, of, of focusing both on, on, on near term and on long term uh, future portfolio, um, where also the distinction is how do we do things that are more incremental and wide spot um, to, of course, having a huge uh, USP uh, um, in, in the long term. And so when we take, uh, for example, now startups and we start evaluating who do we partner with, what areas we are looking at, we always try to plot that on, on such a two by two um, uh, uh, chart in order to get a sense. And we actually have all of the startups that we are running, we have a chart that plots them here, trying to prioritize and to understand when we take a theme like, uh, let's say, um, algorithms for autonomous driving, um, when we look at all the startups uh, that exist and all the different technologies, um, when we plot them like that, that allows us to prioritize and to understand where do we partner, where do we go to, uh, to seek those, those relationships. So that is why this is so critical. And now I promise this is the last theoretical slide. So now, I want to change a little bit gear and actually tell you a story 
of one of these collaborations, um, what it took, um, and, and, and through that tell you basically uh, uh, how we operate and, and a little bit the recipe, if you wish. Um, let's start with uh, first actually the name of the startup. The startup that, that we, we've partnered with uh, already last year is called Leia. It is from, from the Silicon Valley, and it's a, a startup that does uh, a light field, uh, a light field multi view uh, display. You see that display here in the back. Um, it's a display which, uh, although it's a 2D display, um, creates the perception of a 3D image. Uh, this has been done in the past, and even Continental had worked on, on a technology in the past, but the different approaches um, uh, that had been used before included, for example, uh, either glasses that you would need to wear, uh, or, or cameras that, that track your eye movement, uh, and of course, all of this is, is not comfortable. It's not a, a, a technology that you can use comfortably in the car. Leia's technology does not need any of that. Doesn't need cameras, doesn't need glasses. Uh, it is, it is, uh, there is a layer on top of a standard LCD display which diffracts the light in different ways and with software, uh, you're able to create that image. This is now huge uh, uh, technology uh, which Leia first pioneered in, in, in cell phones. They had partnered with RED, the camera maker, and they had launched uh, 2015 or, or, or 16, around that time period, a cell phone on Kickstarter called the RED Hydrogen One. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and that was a little bit of a flop because it is incredibly difficult to get into the smartphone market. Um, but but they, they identified that there is something in that technology and they were looking at how do we enter that technology into different verticals. And automotive was a very good vertical for that. Now, what we, what we did uh, in that context is we established contact with Leia. We ran a POC, a proof of concept project. Um, and, and we wanted to see, is that technology scalable? Can it be scaled up to, you know, from a smartphone to a big screen in the car? Um, and, and in addition to that, we're looking at services that can be enabled because Leia learned one very important thing um, from the smartphone game. You can have a cool piece of tech, the hardware, the display, but if you do not have the information or the services that make use of it, then you're going to fail because it's not going to be attractive enough for consumers to, to benefit from it. And so what they had done as well is they had developed um, a, an SDK, a software development kit, which um, uh, developers could use for the cell phone to create apps, games, camera features, augmented reality, uh, augmented reality apps um, that make use of the 3D features of the phone, of the display. And, and, and that is what, what, what we wanted to visualize here is that you need to have the physical thing, but also the service component on top of it to make that physical thing distinguishable and, 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 and clear and, and exciting. And um, with that, of course, you need to find a way to distribute that. Now on the cell phone, that means a marketplace because you, know, you need to have an app store and on the, on the red hydrogen phone, there was a separate app store in addition to the standard uh, Google app store. There was a separate app store for apps created with this. Now, um, what were the steps actually? So this is, this is what basically the, you know, the, 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 the helicopter view of what Leia and our partnership with them does. And at the moment, we, we, have, we have made an investment in Leia as well that is publicly disclosed. Um, we are developing both the hardware to make sure that it's scalable. We're bringing it in front of customers already, um, which is why um, it, 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 it actually already uh, is, is, is in a way bringing value. Um, but I wanna tell you the story of what actually were the steps um, and what those steps need uh, or, or bring in order to have this success. Um, one of the important things is, uh, the first thing that needs to happen is that there is a need for a strong external and internal ecosystem. When, when, when we talk to, to startups, there needs to be trust on both sides. Trust is a major currency in the innovation ecosystem. And this is true both externally, but also internally. 
if we had identified Leia and we didn't know who to bring it in or we brought it into someone inside and they said, well, okay, that's nice, but who are you? You're some guy from Silicon Valley or, you know, I don't know where. Um, if there is no trust internally, if there is no ecosystem internally around innovation or around looking for such kind of new solutions, then the whole thing fails because, it, you know, it takes a lot of time to build that trust. And, and by that time, that startup is not going to wait. They're going to move to someone else who has already established that ability to gear the startup solution to the corporate world. So you have to build a strong external and internal ecosystem before you actually need the partnership and continue building it um, and continue expanding it uh, because, because you need to be discovering the next things. Um, the next thing uh, that is also critical to do is to map the blind spots and the white spots of the company. Because if we identify a startup, but we still do not know where to bring that startup. Again, we're wasting the time of the startup. Um, we cannot afford that. Um, and the startup would not, would not wait uh, because they have tons of other corporates that they could partner with. Um, we have to be incredibly quick on that. And, and the ability to be quick is to know what does your company need? What is it looking for? Um, what are the things that strategically would make sense in the long term that we might not yet know? And for those, of course, it takes even longer to, to convince them and to explain what they need to do. So what happened with Leia, oh, uh, maybe just to explain what happened with Leia already here. Um, we knew of Leia for quite some time before uh, they actually, uh, uh, before we actually decided to work together. Um, it was not until they knew that they want to try in a different vertical like automotive that the conversation became serious. And that shows you that building that external ecosystem sometimes even requires that you think beyond, beyond your ecosystem, before, beyond your vertical. Uh, because we had to look at, at any technology with the display um, that might have come outside of, of the automotive uh, world. Um, and um, internally, what was um, uh, particularly helpful is we knew, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we, we are doing periodically inside the company is to have discussions with the different business units and business areas about what are some of the things that they are planning, what are some of the strategic uh, uh, projects that they have currently running in order to be able to say, hey, you know, if this is your wide spot, if you're working very hard on this, um, is it always the best to do that with your internal resources if something already exists out there that, that is even better than what you'd be able to accomplish? Um, and that, is, uh, that allows us to bring that disruption uh, um, you know, even earlier than, than, than it is needed. Um, what is also interesting is that what we did with Leia was that we brought um, a business, we brought, a, a, a technology solution which includes a hardware, um, a software or services and a marketplace component to a business unit which does only hardware and so far has only done hardware. Uh, now the, to bring them the thinking around you know services and the marketplace it takes longer. Our colleagues understand very well the physical thing, they understand very well how to build the display but that unit is still to learn a lot about services in the marketplace. And this is where the startup is so critical because they have that know-how. And if they have their trust, if we manage to establish the trust through the hardware uh, uh, understanding and through the hardware collaboration, knowing that it's a blind spot or even a wide spot on the services in the marketplace part, that collaboration can intensify. And that is, that is critical because that helps the company develop further and together with the startup, really bring a solution to, to, to the market. And that of course requires this matching between people and that's an onboarding between people uh, on one hand and then the new tech and the business model on the other hand. And this is not to be taken lightly. You know, we are all in a people business. Um, and, and, and that is sometimes the difficult thing that we have high reliance on key individuals inside the company. And that is why, again, the trust is so important. There has to be tra transparency. There has to be a relationship established before 
you know, we just come in and say, hey, you know, your innovation project sucks, here is a solution from outside. No one is going to buy into that. Um, this is a matchmaking job uh, uh, that, that such innovation units like ours is doing and what my colleagues are doing and I'm so thrilled to be with them. And um, the final, oops, the final uh, um, sort of meta reflection on this is that it takes time. Uh, it takes time to educate corporates on the need for agility and how to do co-creation and partnering. And this whole culture transformation uh, bit is a long journey. Um, it's not going to be possible from day one for our colleagues in, in the business unit dealing with the display to also immediately be able to know how to do a service or how to do a platform. That's not going to happen. And it's not just the skills aspect uh, or you know it's not just programming skills it is it is the mindset it is the understanding of, of, of what that business model looks like um, and, and, and that takes time and we all are very impatient we all you know think that you know we just bring people together we do a couple of workshops we sign the contract and that's it um, no it is it is a longer process um, but so these are for me the four key elements on, on how to make such, such, a, such a collaboration successful and what, what steps one needs to take. Uh, and, and, and this is what we did with the example of, of, of Leah. Now I'm coming to the very end uh, with, with the recipe, if you wish, of, of what an innovation unit like ours has done, uh, what Continental has done uh, in order to bring that, that, that success and to bring impact uh, both to the startup ecosystem, but also to uh, our colleagues at Continental. And let's start with the first one. Um, define a very clear mandate. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, it is critical to know what is the purpose, what are the things that you're looking at, and, have, uh, and, and make sure that that is clear to the company. Um, because if they don't know what your mandate is, then, uh, um, then they will also have difficulty understanding why you exist. So define a clear mandate of that uh, unit and execute it in an incredibly lean way. As you see, 15 people, you work incredibly lean. Uh, there is something wrong either with the animation here or something is missing. Um, I'll exit to show you the slide. Uh, the second is bring a strong team combining a broad tech business and people skills. Um, I couldn't emphasize this more. Uh, this, the team is critical and, and, and it, it's not sufficient to have very strong individuals. We have to work closer as a team and being strong as a team. Um, 15 people is an incredibly small team. Uh, that means that, that every element of that team has to be even a better fit than if it was a bigger team. Um, and, and so that is, that is, that is uh, something not to be underestimated. And most importantly, focus on impact. I, you know, impact was in the header um, of the today's webinar, uh, but what it means is that you have to make sure that the startups are, uh, the startup col collaborations are not just innovation theater. There has to be clarity as to the strategy, to the strategic fit um, and to the product roadmap that you want to generate um, and it has to be as quickly as possible startups do not have the the the, the luxury of waiting the way that that corporates sometimes do um, and, and 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 it's a competitive game out there because they can partner with with a lot of other companies a lot of other corporates so speed is 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 critical and none of that is really possible without uh, the, the, the optimism of the team. Um, and, and this persistent optimism, it is, it is a, actually a descriptor for entrepreneurs, really. Um, and, and we have to be entrepreneurs as well. Um, it, is, it, is, it is very easy in a corporate to be complacent and even cynical sometimes. Uh, that is something we cannot afford to do. Uh, the corporate units should not be doing and cannot afford to be doing. So these are for me the four recipes, uh, the, the four steps uh, that, that, that are needed for a unit to succeed and to bring the value to the corporate uh, when working with startups. 
I'm closing with um, an invitation for everyone to connect to, uh, with me, um, uh, uh, you know, for, for questions, for further discussions, uh, for just for sharing insights uh, collectively, either through uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, also via email. Um, and, and a final word, uh, if you actually want to get in touch uh, related to a specific collaboration activity, particularly uh, with the colleagues in Singapore, the uh, the, 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 uh, our two colleagues, uh, uh, Wilson and David, um, are, are, are fantastic people to talk to about um, uh, such collaborations. Um, uh, uh, you know, Ryan here, of course, a great host, uh, um, and uh, uh, Aravind um, uh, uh, helping, helping bring the two worlds together uh, in, in this uh, ICUMA uh, program. And with that, I'm now very excited to hear questions. Uh, and to discuss um, what what you'd like to know more um, and and what uh, some of your reflections might be. Right, thank you so much, Constantine, for the sharing. I really, really uh, enjoy your presentation. In fact, echoing on your point about trust, maybe I want to abuse my uh, right now to ask your first question. In this global economy of slowdown against the backdrop of COVID situation, deglobalization trend, and so on, where do you think uh, the opportunities or the challenges for corporate innovation arms like Copace, where trust, collaboration, and partnership has been fundamental and the basis of innovation? Yeah, um, it's, it's a fantastic question because, of course, in these times, everything is more difficult. Um, you know, in this context, I think trust and, and having had the reputation and the partnership established is a hygiene factor. Uh, hygiene being very important, as we know today, um, uh, perhaps even more than before, in the sense that if we didn't have it, if we don't have it, things don't work. It's, 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 it simply won't happen. Um, and at the moment, it's very difficult to build. Um, at the same time, it's probably you know, um, even it, difficult to build because you cannot meet people, you cannot, uh, you know, you have to, uh, you know, start doing research or going to, you don't, you don't go to conferences, you don't have the same level of exchange with people. Um, so you, in a way, you have to have started doing it before. I don't think that, 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 that it's lost if you don't have it. Um, there are many ways that you can do that. And, and you know, connecting even more with people digitally, perhaps on one-on-one -on -one basis, is even more important. I mean, LinkedIn, uh, you know, I've had a number of conversations in the past two weeks uh, with people that we've never met uh, before, uh, but through LinkedIn, uh, we established common, uh, uh, you know, common questions to discuss, uh, we reached out to each other and we learned a lot. Um, and this is a first step that, that, that one can do. Um, and, and of course, on a, on a, on a sort of a company-wide basis or, or, or from a, you know, how do companies establish that trust, you know, whether it's a startup with a corporate uh, or, or startups with other startups or, you know, investors with investors. Um, it, it, is, it is a fine line between being too uh, 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 needy because we all at the moment need uh, you know more clarity need, need stability need the safety uh, 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 startups at the moment uh, you know a lot of startups are actually struggling as well because either they're running out of funding or they cannot find customers because corporates are you know innovation not so important now I have to make sure that the next two months I have cash um, and, 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 and so that's where the optimism uh, become so important because uh, they, they, you know, you cannot go into building trust when when you're in a cynical state of mind, um, and and so that's why I, I I think there is still a lot of opportunity and still uh, people have to continue. And what we continue doing actually is going back to our colleagues internally and say we cannot stop now. Our speed has to continue. We have to increase the speed of partnering. Uh, that is our message to our corporate colleagues as well. Um, and, um, uh, and and that's that's basically the, the the mission. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a question from Liang Yu. Uh, in fact. Uh, Larry is asking uh, for you to elaborate more on the corporate entrepreneurship example in large and medium co corporations. Uh, maybe you want to give some comments on that? Um, corporate entrepreneurship 
in the sense of uh, corporate colleagues, people from the company creating companies or creating products. Is that what, what is meant? Uh, Larry, would you like to uh, ask the questions? Uh, let me allow you to talk. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Leon. Uh, yeah. Leon. Hello. Hello, Constant. Hi. Hi, we, we know each other, yeah. yeah. I was wondering if you, uh, surely you know more beyond the continent and see other corporations that they also create this kind of entrepreneurship unit or, or you know, innovation centers like Copace and maybe you can share some stories uh, on that yep. your overview. Yeah. Thanks for the question. So the, the, the um, in, you know, the corporate entrepreneurship um, has been actually a lot of units have been created, particularly from the other automotive uh, companies, um, where the 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 mission of those units has either been culture transformation, uh, which is why you send people, uh, you teach them about agile methods, Scrum, um, you teach them about uh, design thinking and other things. Um, they create some nice fancy pitches. But typically, the, those do not materialize into an actual business or an actual product. Um, this is still important element because it is about people development, culture development. However, you can afford to do that only if uh, the market economy is good, if you position it well as such, not as a, um, uh, you know, we try to create new products, but actually we're just teaching people. Um, and so from a, from a pure internal marketing, it actually sits closer to what HR uh, uh, classically is responsible for. There is the other extreme of units which um, try to really build then business models that are entirely new to the corporate. Now, their challenge, however, is that if you build something that might be even mildly successful, um, there is no way to connect that back to the, to the mother company because by definition, it is a new business. So there is no way to, you know, there is no connection to the corporate or to the core uh, uh, of that company. And typically, it will take at least 10 years for some kind of a totally new radical business model to emerge as something that is even comparable to a business unit or to another part of that company to justify the needed attention. And so you'll always have this friction between uh, such kind of innovation approaches where there is no way to bring an actual business value to the company or business impact to the company. Now, what, uh, and this has been my lesson for the past one year, trying to run actually such a program uh, uh, internally. What we did last year, which uh, uh, at least from, from, from the feedback that we are collecting is getting, getting a success, um, is that we, we looked and we said, how can we actually accelerate um, uh, uh, e existing innovation activities, which today would be considered probably too outside of our core, but somehow utilizing either a unique market advantage or uh, access to customers or unique know-how uh, that the company has. And so um, one example, and I, I'm, I'm afraid I cannot go into too much detail of that example publicly, um, but one, one of the, the, the products that one of the teams developed was actually uh, um, you know, a complementary service for one of our existing physical products. So similar to the layer example, as I mentioned, there is the hardware component, but then there is need to be a software elements or, or service elements on top of that. So one of our units um, uh, who comes out of, I can say that, uh, um, comes out of our conveyor belt business. So we, we do Continental does, uh, you know, conveyor belts for all kinds of industries, including the mining industry. So one of our uh, teams looked at the conveyor belt know-how that we have and said one of the most critical parts of conveyor belt business is actually the maintenance of those conveyor belts. How can we design a, 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 a service that helps us ensure that we provide the quality of the hardware elements or the conveyor belt itself, but provide the maintenance, the remote service to make sure that that conveyor belt stays uh, operational um, uh, at all times. 
and they used a lot of know-how that comes both from our core conveyor belt business, but also from our automation and, and, and other business areas which normally do not interact. And, and this is an incredibly successful team which in two months developed a proof of concept, had a prototype running, and um, uh, get, got uh, already, uh, you know, the day they finished the incubation, they got absorbed in the business unit where they were given the needed supports to continue developing that. And even despite the fact that, you know, the, 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 the whole industry is in, in a super difficult time and a super difficult situation at the moment, that, that team is actually continuing to build and bringing that uh, uh, closer and closer to a launch state um, for, for the business. So it is a new thing. At the same time, it's adding value to our existing product portfolio. And it's a combination of uh, uh, both our existing know-how and access to market, but also uh, totally new uh, know-how that is being brought through that accelerated learning that an incubation program like that can bring. Um, and so, although this is not really, you know, now creating a totally new uh, uh, part of Continental, uh, it is still adding a tremendously high value to, to the company. Um, and, and in these times and days, I think this is perhaps even more important than trying to be really disruptive, uh, which, which is um, perhaps even over, a little bit overhyped, you know, this desire to disrupt stuff, you know. It's not about disrupting, it's about building. Um, and, and we have to be more focused on building, I think. Right, thank you so much. Uh, Constantine, I, I think we are a bit running out of time. So uh, if you are okay, you can stay back for the Q&A. Uh, let me just make some announcement before we come back to the questions because we still have a few more questions uh, okay. getting to the startup side of the topic. So uh, thank you so much uh, for all the audience to, to join us for today's session. Uh, just in case you have any uh, follow-up appointments uh, after this, uh, I'm going to just share some information first before you come back to the Q&A. So at the end of this webinar session, there will be a survey for you to give feedback to enhance our future webinar. So do feel free to uh, do give us the feedback and uh, help us to make a better webinar for you in the future. Uh, please follow us on Ecolab's LinkedIn page and join us live this Friday, 12 June at uh, in the morning at 9.30 a.m. for the next Ecolabs webinar series, Hydrogen for Mobility, Land, Sea and Air by Dr. Aravin, uh, leads of the Energy Storage and E-Mobility from Ecolab Center of Innovation for Energy. So for those who need to go, you are, thank you so much and please stay safe and healthy. Uh, so coming back to the questions, uh, we focus a lot on the corporate aspect of it and how culture change. But as a key player in the technology sectors, uh, coming from a startup point of view, would you suggest startup to to take a wait and see approach or be aggressive in their business development or even technology development uh, effort to position them in the cold, post COVID recovery, or maybe more specifically, how might startup pivot themselves to thrive in the post-COVID world? What kind of strategy may startup adopt to be successful in this case? I mean, the COVID situation is a unique one, right? Because for the first time, we are forced to stay at home. Uh, the economic repercussions are not very clear and, and it's not something that, that we can entirely control. Um, and, and we know that we will emerge out of that as a very different society globally. Um, you know, rarely there has been something that has been so um, impactful to, uh, uh, you know, to a whole, to the whole world. Um, and, and, uh, and, and what we know from, from the startup ecosystem is that a lot of uh, uh, startups, as I already mentioned, are, um, you know, trying to still make, also make ends meet and, and uh, realizing that, the cash flow that they have will help them run for a while, uh, uh, but but uh, unless they keep on partnering and being successful at at, at, at um, uh, monetizing their product, uh, they might face also a challenging times. So, for them, um, I, I think what probably remains even more true is 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 remaining incredibly focused on their product. I would not pivot necessarily 
to something that, that brings close to Corona unless you really have very clear USP uh, that, that can somehow help, the, uh, it, it help translate the key technology that you have to somehow a, 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 a problem that, that is being created by the Corona crisis. Um, an example is a startup from, from, uh, uh, from Germany here that um, had before Corona had been developing uh, uh, small tags that you can attach to pallets in the manufacturing environment in order to be able to track where they are. Uh, you know, and and what, what they realize is, of course, they can use those tags to, uh, to, to make sure that they can measure the distance between people. And so if people stay within a distance of less than two meters uh, to one another for more than five seconds, then that tag can emit a small sound. And so they pivoted and they created a new product line that basically is, uh, you know, the Corona social distancing line of, of their product portfolio. Now they could do that because that was relying on their core technology. And that is fantastic. That's a fantastic example. Um, but there are others that, that simply say, well, our business now is non-existent. Um, if it is non-existent, then you have two options. You go out of business and you close shop or you totally pivot. That, that I, you know, I, I, there is no recipe for that. Uh, that depends on the team, depends on the, 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 the team um, and, and, and the, the leaders of, of that team. Um, and, and then the third category is probably startups that, that, that cannot really necessarily translate easily any kind of a USP into the Corona thing. For those, I would say double down, be as lean as possible on what you're doing, uh, but, but be as persistent because uh, whatever you've been thinking that we need and whatever technology uh, you've been building, it will continue to be needed for sure. Because as, you know, as I said in the beginning, mobility was important, is important, will be important. It might look a little bit different, but uh, 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 you know, the, the core tech will be necessary and the core business model will find a realization. So, so double down and continue building um, uh, and, and uh, we'll get out of that uh, at one point. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we have a question from uh, Roman. Roman, would you like to voice your question? I uh, allow you to talk. You can unmute yourself and voice a question. Okay. Hello. Yes, Hi, Roman. Uh, Constantine, uh, thanks for insight. Yeah, my question is more domain specific. Uh, is there uh, mm, some uh, investig uh, have uh, Continental some investigation regarding building um, economic system for machine to machine interaction, robot to robot interaction, uh, that named Robonomics? Maybe you know familiar with this term. Is this some investigation in this topic? Um, it's not something that we've looked at uh, and, and I do not feel totally comfortable uh, uh, you know, saying yes or no to this. Um, perhaps, perhaps it's worth if you, if, you, if you could send me a short, uh, I don't know, a, a slide deck or something and, and, and I can see if, if, if uh, one of my colleagues is, is, is able to give a more concrete uh, and, and helpful answer for that. Okay, I will send you okay. some details. Yeah. Right. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Uh, Sean have a question uh, in the Q and A box. Uh, yeah. Sean, I I'm allowing you to talk. Maybe you want to uh, unmute yourself and voice a question live. Okay. Sure. Can yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my my question is this. Uh, thanks. Thanks for presenting. Uh, is that supposedly if we have uh, an innovation that fall under the heat category, uh, I mean. You know, i.e., things like uh, because I saw on your your screen you have Google as one of your partners, but uh, there are other uh, Korean startups which we are working with, which have uh, which have a lot of good uh, innovative mapping solutions for autom uh, autonomous mobility and so on. Uh, can we send to you directly for you to review if these solutions would be a fit? Um, so, so to clarify a little bit, uh, the, the Google logo that you saw was not that Google is a partner. I'm sure they're a partner of Continental uh, in some shape or form somewhere. Uh, mm. but, but the logo that I was showing was in the context of the team. And so our team 
uh, is, is, is the continental employees who have background having worked at Google, uh, Dell, Deloitte, etc. Right, right. um, uh, so that, that just to clarify that. Um, the, the, the specific question of how how the evaluation process looks like, uh, you know, th there are you know two ways. You know, typically we get contacted. Um, you know, if it's a startup that always needs to go somehow through through us, um, and startups can get in touch with us either through our website or through our colleagues. Um, if you are, uh, um, you know, in Singapore, you can also get in touch with the uh, colleagues uh, in Singapore um, mm -hmm. uh, because they would be also uh, much better able to gear you to the, the, the heat organization there if there is a potential collaboration. Um, if, um, uh, um, uh, and, and, and of course it depends on the solution, uh, what the solution is. Now for some of these things, we might even be looking for more concrete uh, uh, topics. As you saw, um, I think in one of the slides I meant, uh, it showed in the beginning, the collaboration with uh, uh, Ecolabs has specific uh, focus fields uh, from, um, uh, you know, if I remember correctly, from drones uh, and topics related to, uh, uh, to drones uh, through uh, autonomous driving, telematics, uh, uh, and, and even electric uh, technologies. Um, uh, you know, if it fits in one of these, then, then, then perfect. You can even, uh, um, you know, follow the Ecolabs uh, Urban Mobility Accelerator program uh, and, and, and take a look uh, at submitting uh, your contact details there. Um, if it is something else, then I would still go to my colleagues uh, in Singapore. Uh, so that was David and Wilson, uh, and they'll, they'll be able to give feedback also at, uh, uh, what is the fit between what you have in mind with the heat uh, uh, heat topics? Okay. Yep. Clear. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank and you there so is much, also um, another question in the Q and A from uh, anonymous attendee: Is Copace an independent investing arm, or a mandated incubator, or Continental CVC? And uh, maybe I quickly go back to that one slide. Um, to make that 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 uh, uh, clear um, here, and um, I don't know if the anonymous is still uh, there, um, but but uh, you know, Copace uh, technically is only these two elements: the incubation and the startup cooperation, or a venture client, uh, a corporate venture client uh, uh, term. The investments and corporate venture uh, uh, capital. Uh, does not come out of Copay's uh, uh, team, but it's a team that we work very closely with. It's a team that reports within the finance organization of Continental. And, and of course, this is an important distinction because that allows us to have um, a very balanced perspective because we do not, they do not invest purely for financial uh, reasons. They need also a very strong strategic input, which comes from us and the business. So we together make recommendations and we work together to figure out how to best do an investment. Um, and that allows us also to be independent in our thinking uh, and collaborations with a startup because we know that startups are not going to be coming to us looking for money. They're coming to us uh, looking for for technology expertise, for knowledge of the auto automotive industry, for uh, you know connection to the market uh, and so on. Um, they, you know, startups go to should go probably for 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 more easy access to easy money, uh, easier money to the VCs, to classical VCs, to 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 financial VCs, uh, not to corporate VCs for that matter. So that 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 is that is the answer a little bit to 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 this one question that um, was posed by anonymous. I don't know if 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 you want uh, whoever the anonymous attendee was, if they want to to clarify that further. Um, yeah, okay, that's clear, I see here, perfect, great. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I think there's no more questions from the floor. Uh, Constantine, really thank you so much for sharing your insight and staying back with us uh, to share, to answer more of the question for the attendees and uh, really like to thank uh, everyone who stayed back to uh, interact and exchange with Constantine and us on the program. So. Uh, do remember to fill out the feedback, uh, uh, survey feedback and uh, help us to make uh, 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 
continue to make a better uh, webinar session in the future. Uh, we will share the slides uh, with you all later this week with some of the information and also uh, more information with the uh, Ecolabs Continental Urban Mobility Accelerator Program. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email or, or, or I'm very happy to connect you with Constantine and the rest of the local Continental team as well. So thank you so much again for uh, the wonderful time and uh, thank you so much. Thanks Constantine. Thank you. Thank you all for the invitation and thanks everyone for engaging in questions and uh, looking forward to being in touch again. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.